What is up? What is going on, David SVA Card Collectors? This show is insane. Not really. Um, it's okay. Well, you know, that's what you like to hear when you uh, pop on the podcast. Here's an okay show. Um, well, I was doing a science experiment, and you will see an article and a YouTube video. A YouTube, the YouTube, sound like an old man, a video coming out um, about this topic, how to unstick your sports cards. Now, I started with the 1993 Upper Deck Series 2 because that was the box that I have. Um, I had three of them. I opened one um, as a box break, um, and this one I did as an experiment. And so, uh, before I get started, we will be having the sports talk tonight uh, on Zoom. You can go to my group page. Um, I'll share it on my Twitter, um, Instagram, and we're just talking, we're shooting the breeze. Just shooting the breeze. All right, so we'll be doing that. Um, been having a good sales. Uh, quick note before I start. Sales have been really good. I've been posting more stuff. I've been selling a decent amount. Um Again, guys, you should not be buying. You should be buying when there's good deals. If you're doing quick flips, then yeah, I guess they're good deals because you can buy them and everything's going up, so you can just sell it quickly. Um, But you should be hoarding cash right now, hoarding it as much as possible, waiting for those awesome deals that's going to be coming around in November and December, and they will be around. I am telling you this, okay? So right now, what do you think Warren Buffett is doing? Do you think he's buying right now? No, the stock market doesn't reflect the real de- with, you know, the real situation. Right now, it's a little too high. He's hoarding cash. That's what he's doing because he's looking for good deals. Be like Warren Buffett. That's all I got to say. So, back to the science experiment. So, what did I do? Well, I got like three or four packs, and I threw them in the freezer, and I left them for a whole day. Then... I took about four packs and I heated them up um, over a towel and I heated them up with a hairdryer. Then I saw someone microwave the card, so I said, why not? And that's what I did, folks. And so when I finally got them out of the freezer, I opened them up and really it didn't help too much. They were still bricked, but I will say this, separating them was a little bit easier and there was a lot less um, picture loss. Um, so that was a good thing. So that was the only thing that I saw out of that. Second, so I started going with the iron and I went to town on uh, these cards. Went to town. Whew. So they got very, very hot. I did it on both sides. The first pack I opened was like the first two or three cards just fell out. After that, same deal. Um, Very similar to um, the ice. Actually, the first pack, actually, I was able to slide the cards once or twice, and then there was just a solid brick. Um, So I thought maybe I had to do it for a little bit longer. Um, But as they got cooler, as it cooled up, because I opened one pack at a time, um, they got a little bit worse. So... Um, On that front, you might want to do one pack at a time. I'll give you the conclusion at the end. Um, So I did that. Then I um, opened up the pack of cards because you can't put the foil around it because it's going to mess up your microwave. Um, I put the cards in. I did it for 30 seconds. That may have been a little too long because you could smell the cookness of, uh, of upper deck. Um, it didn't smell too good. Um, there was actually like water on the plate, um, and um, they warped them. They got warped pretty bad, and they stuck really. They got really stuck. So um, microwaving for 30 seconds is a big no, 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 no. Um, but I did, however, do it for 10 seconds, and it wasn't so bad. Maybe I should have done it for five seconds. Um, but 10 seconds was a little bit better. Um, so I, first thing before anything, I opened up the packs and if you saw my video, I I think I have the video, um, on YouTube 
of me opening up the first box of these. These things were really difficult to open. Um, it was a pain in the butt. Um, a lot of damage to the cards. The white speckles because the you know some of the um, picture came off and went on the back of another card. Um, it was just a problem, and no Jeter rookie for on the first box. And so um, it was a pain. It really was. It was really difficult, um, and it took a long time to open. This too took me a long time, but with when I, without any of the chicanery of what I was doing, they were. It was a little bit easier. I was able to pull them apart a little bit easier, and maybe that's because it was in a controlled environment. The guy who I bought this from, he had it in his garage, um, and it was actually some other guy um, stored them, and the guy passed away, and he was selling it for, I don't, I don't know who he was selling for, you know, the, the person's parents or, or whoever. I'm, I'm not too sure. So um, the humidity maybe could have, because uh, we learned about humidity in the previous uh, podcast and article, um, we're learning here. We're doing a step-by-step learning. We're doing a, a learning kit. Um, a learning kit. Ugh. My English is horrific. I need to go back to, to English school. And learn me, learn me some English. So it was bad, 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 bad. So now that I did that stuff, it was a little bit easier. So I'm going to say this: I think if you put the box of cards in the freezer, um, especially these, maybe '92 Bowman, the ones are very glossy. Um, they won't unbrick. The bricks, the brick, but. You'll have less loss of, you know, the picture where you'll get that white speckles because some of the actual ink is taken off of the card. It was much less um, than it was when I just opened them up up regularly. Um, Same thing with um, heating them up. Heating them up with the hair iron, I think, was the best because they somewhat were easier to take off, and it was a lot less, it it was very similar to the ice, you know, to the freezer, where the picture loss, there was not, you know, that much significant, uh, that was a horrific sentence, um, picture loss, so you have that, the worst, I thought, was the microwave technique, Um, one, I cooked it a little too much, and then the 10 seconds, I, I just didn't feel that it did much and it looked like, had I done nothing, um, it, it was the same. It came out to the same results. Um, is there one where I go, all right, this is what you got to do? No. There's nothing that if their cards are bricked, when you open up the packs and there's just like five solid cards stuck together, there's no magical thing where you just go poof and that was it. Um, sidebar. I did get... Mr. Jeter. Now, one of them I did not film. And when I got it, I saw it was on the top. It was the top card flipped backwards. And so I said, let me go inside. I'm going to heat this bad boy up. So I heated the bad boy up so bad. So I heated it so good. She's so good. I heated it so good um, that the top, the, the card that it was stuck underneath with, flew off the deck (laughs) and landed on my bathroom floor, which I then gave a good old MF, picked up the card. Actually, the Jeter card was fine, the corners and everything like that, but it had the same issue. I took it off bottom right-hand corner, um, a little white spot. It was just lost, and I I was pissed because it's like the same thing as the first one that I got that you'll see in the video. Um, And I talk gibber, and I talk smack about how I'm not going to get anything. It's funny um, how that happens. So the video, uh, hopefully I'll be able to get it out by tomorrow. Um, The article will take a little bit longer because I'm going to write a little bit more, expunge a little bit more on it, um, and you'll be able to see pictures and videos and and engross yourself a little bit more. Engross. Um, Other news. I saw um, Daryl Ravel. Now, he's a, a... I forget who he writes for, but he's baseball card news, sports news, but more, he's one of the guys that talks a decent amount of baseball card news 
in sports. Like, in the sports world, he's the guy who goes, well, what about baseball cards? And he'll bring that up every once in a while. And he said there is an uptick in auctions um, not being paid for. And I know I've seen a couple. I know, uh, you know, in our Flick Chat group, we had uh, someone who, who um, they didn't pay. Um, I've seen some p- grumblings on it. And I agreed with a lot of the comments that were said. That's because there's a lot more people buying. And I think there's a lot more sales. So you're, that's, you're also going to get people who don't pay. That is always uh, an issue with me on auctions. That's why I don't like, especially those high-ticketed items. I get very nervous because I get so excited. And if they didn't pay for it, I would be so annoyed. I'd be so depressed. I'd cry. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. So, um, I, I just think it's, you know, because there's more sales. There's more people involved. There's more people buying and selling cards. Um, those Topps Project 2020 cards are still flying off the shelves, even though they're still mostly god-awful. Um, I don't know if I said this on the podcast. I actually bought three Mike Trouts, the one with the black, and they look like a like a rock style um, Mike Trout. They look beautiful. I saw it. I was the, it was one of the only times, other than seeing the, the uh, 90s inserts, where I said, Holt, this looks awesome. I actually bought three of them. One to keep and two to sell, because I got a feeling these things are going to go up. Um, and the Ricky Henderson card that just came out, that looks really nice. Um, there's some here and there that look good, but I would say the vast majority look yucky. But there are people that may want to collect the whole set, the whole series. So maybe those ugly ones will be a problem to get because everyone's going to go, oh, Jesus, these look horrible. And so maybe someone, you know, after a while when they don't have them, they may pay a premium. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't care about that. Um, I, I also see Michael Jordan a little bit decline. I think I see us people just going, all right, this is what we're going to pay for a Michael Jordan base card. I think we went a little nuts. I think we got a little crazy here. Let's, let's take it back a notch. Um, I'm starting to see that. You know, Michael Jordan cards aren't flying as, as much as they were before. Um, but I, I noticed that. And um, that's pretty much it, guys. Flick, um, SVACardCollectors.com. Download the Flick Chat app. Um, we have the baseball talk at baseball talk at nine o'clock tonight, uh, Eastern time. Um, it's really the only time that counts. Sucks to be you. No, I'm sorry. All right, and you guys know what to do. Buy some cards, go broke. Later. So I wanted to talk about a new marketplace that's about to hit the sports card scene called Starstock. Starstock is building a sports card marketplace aimed to be faster and cheaper for flipping sports cards than any other platform. This is a ground level moment and Starstock is currently looking for people who want to be the first to sell their cards at launch of this new platform. They are offering 5% commission, no ingestion fees. You send in your cards, they do all the work and post for you. Cards are guaranteed and secured in a vault. You can choose to ship cards back at any time. They also have a little guy. He stands in front of the vault. Nobody can get in. Nobody can get out. I think his name is Pedro. Starstock will be a flipper's paradise. Ooh, a paradise. Where you can buy, flip, store, or ship cards with a click of a button. If you are interested in getting involved as a seller, contact Mike at Mike at Starstock.com. They're right now only looking for rookie cards and prospects of current players. Again, Mike at Starstock.com, or you can head over to their website, Starstock.com. Okay.